Good morning. A very warm welcome to you. If you are joining us live, um, it's uh, we're delighted to uh, to to be welcoming um, Paul and Wayne with us this morning, who've got some incredible stories to share, but also um, some some really um, useful experiences in the world of digital marketing. And we'll come to those in just a minute. Um, my name's Phil Wright from Simspra. I'm the business transformation manager here at Simspra and involved with the digital marketing hub. Um, so if it's the first time you're joining a webinar, a very warm welcome. We hope you enjoy this session and we've got many more to look forward to, but also we've also run quite a number of webinars to date so far and all of the recordings can be found in the Digital Marketing Hub. Um, before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we want this session to be interactive, so please do take the opportunity to ask questions of Paul and Wayne this morning. Um, you should be able to find the Q&A box um, as well as the, the chat, which I believe is uh, it's available for you to use this morning. Um, and we've also got um, live transcription available as well. So if you want to bring up um, auto transcript, um, you can do so by clicking the little icon um, on the taskbar, which has the two C's um, and that should should work um, for you, but please do ask questions throughout. Um, however, this session is very much about the experiences of Paul and Wayne. So good morning to you, Paul and Wayne. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. All good, thank you. Um, and they're dialing in from East Lang. So I think somewhere in the realms of Blackburn is, is where you're joining us from. Um, so great to have you with us. And they're from a, a charity Creative Football, um, which is a, a fantastic charity, um, and they're doing some absolutely brilliant work. Um, and uh, I just wanted to give a, a very quick sort of background to, to Paul to begin with, um, because he's been a, through an, a, a very moving um, and inspirational um, journey as well into sort of doing what he now currently does as a community development support worker at Creative Football. But actually, you kind of started with Creative Football as a as a um, as a user, a service user of of the uh, the great work that you do and continue to do. Um, and you you actually went through a. a pretty traumatic and life-changing experience quite a few years ago um being struck by uh by a, a huge amount of electricity that put you into cardiac arrest and that sort of changed your life didn't it paul uh, yeah it did um at the time as well i was um playing good standard of football um, <clears throat> at the time i was diagnosed with ptsd um did a lot of counseling so i thought my life was okay, um, struggled in and out, but I just thought it was normal, if I'm honest. Um, and in 2017, uh, I had a son on the way and I had, had a son for his first birthday. I um, attempted suicide, I just hit rock bottom. Um, probably had a breakdown, if I'm honest. Um, lucky enough, I come through it. Um, and at the time there was, the counselling and doctors, nothing was really working for me. Um, not saying it doesn't for others, because um, it does. It just wasn't working for me. And I got put on to, at the time, it was creative support. It was a Wednesday session that we still couldn't run now. Um, I hadn't played football for seven years. I quit when I was 21. Um, so I started going down and started enjoying it. Um, sort of five or six weeks, I was a bit more motivated. Give me a bit of structure as well because it was every Wednesday at the same place. Um, and then I got asked to play in the social inclusion football league that they ran, um, which was every Friday, well, once a month on a Friday. And it was just like minded people. It was really, it was an eye opener that I weren't the only one that struggled. I weren't the only one that had hit rock bottom. Um, and I've just found my passion again for football, if I'm honest. Um, so I, as I kept going to these sessions and to the league, I just found um, my mental health, my physical health was improving. Um, 
lost a bit of weight, uh, a bit like I say, a bit just structure, a bit of routine. Um, met fantastic friends, um, especially two colleagues I work with now. And um, yeah, so that, that that that's that's where I got up to. And then ten months later, I was asked to um, volunteer on a project we called Blokes United. It was originally started in Hull, actually, with Jamie Barmer, Leatherborough, ex Premiership player, football player. Um, we just felt that there was nothing. I worked for ten years, sorry, um, but I was quite socially isolated, and there was nothing out of nine till five hours. Um, I didn't have five friends that I could just go and grab and play in a foot in a league. Um, and we just felt there's something out of hours in the evenings for people just to, for the prevention side of it more than anything, because I felt it could have maybe stopped me hitting rock bottom. Um, and that's how we come up with Blokes United on an evening. So I volunteered, me and Wayne set that up and volunteered on that for three years. Um, then we got funding off Sport England and that's where we are now. Creative football has actually only been Although the work, the legwork's been put in since 2008 with our project manager, Creative Football I did actually only start in June last year. That's when we decided to put all our projects under one umbrella. So, yeah. Well, firstly, thank you very much for sharing that really personal journey and sort of coming in initially as someone who's benefiting very personally from the services of what now is creative football. Um, I wonder, when if you could just perhaps talk about sort of the wider vision and purpose and community of, of what it is that you're doing, sort of encompassing all the different projects, because um, like, you know, like many other charities and organizations in our sector, you know, we, we've, uh, I feel like your purpose is gonna really connect with, with people who are tuning in perhaps today or watching this as a recording. Um, so yeah, uh, Creative Football is an umbrella for three projects. Um, starting off with the Social Inclusion League, that's where we met as opponents. I was from one organisation, but was playing for the other organisation. So um, very briefly, that was set up for all services to come together. So we had lots of local services, i.e. supported living, um, recovery homes, mental health hospitals, um, gaps in the system, care homes, uh, learning difficulty sessions, and um, like we were talking about earlier on myself and Paul, and what that was really, it was done. And, and I think it just evolved into what it was as a connector. So if people needed to move on to the next stage, they met them people already and Again, we've got the staff and service users, footballers, but that also changed the, the dynamics in them relationships as well, because then it's a teammate, it's, it's that trust and it's Dave. It's not when you sat across somebody, if you go into a, um, to a service, you know, you sat across the table from someone for a badge, it's quite an anxious time. And all these, these barriers can be removed from them and obviously... Um, that's still um, going now. It's it's really evolved into three separate leagues. So you've got the Premier League. Uh, so it's a little bit more faster. Again, the teams are far and wide. We have teams coming all the way from Derby to that. We've had teams coming from Scotland to that, uh, London to that, um, of like regularly Wigan and, you know, Bolton. Bolton, surrounding areas. So they're coming to that and that's their football, football therapy, we call it. It's our football connecting, you know, it's a bit of competitiveness, but no sliding challenges. And the championship, it's maybe the people not so, um, maybe not so active, but they get to play that competitive, put a kit on, put a badge on, that togetherness. Um, and then recently we just started uh, the Academy League, which is a joy because most people learn difficulties with autism and, you know, uh, physical disability. Yeah, some really high needed care and getting that opportunity um but again the, f the football is just a carrot it's what goes on behind the scenes what people need to see so we can help people with benefits help people with housing i've uh, been doing lots of stuff like your five ways to well-being the mental health first aid course and there's Jobs. yeah we managed to get people who've got in a few a few agencies more and more partners and it's getting 
like a weekly planner for people. Um, there's a story coming out soon. One lad has just come through rehab and stuff, and now he's actually working. We just started working for the team of supported all his life, Black Bear Rovers, through volunteering for us, wow. and so that creates opportunities. So that's pretty much the uh, social inclusion league, obviously, joining all the dots, people moving on for the right reasons. Uh, going back to what Paul said, Bloach United was set up. Um, because we've talked with a friend and our own journeys, there's nothing, everything's nine to five. Everything is nine to five. And predominantly males, um, well, go to the doctors, when I say been to the GPs and stuff like that, men won't talk. I think, you know, it's bred from us from three years old. Hey, girls cry, boys don't cry. Um, I'm just going back again, sorry. Um, say one in four people struggle it in. It's all of us for our time whether through bereavements, loss of relationships, work, so many things. And like Paul said, sometimes people can't afford it. It's £750 for a grassroots team before you start. You know, if you haven't got them five friends. So Bloats United was set up so anybody over the age of 16 can come and play football and have a bit of a laugh. And then we've got sponsors for each of our sessions that put on brews, a bit of food, so then afterwards, the endorphins go in, go for a chat. We've been open and honest about our stories. And as the time's gone on, everybody has come, come forward. And it's great to see them sessions evolve. We started and seven of us went down, which was four volunteers. Yeah. Uh, one of them being my support worker at the time, because I come with a support worker. Um, them sessions now have spread out to four different areas and uh, a regularity in between 30 and 50 people a session um, <laughs> each night. Um, and then there's the Girls United. The Girls United, again, is for mums who are unemployed or in services, but, you know, people who just give birth to children, having that bit of respite, being amongst, you know, a different crowd instead of a, what is a, the gym? I think the gym scares people off so much. You know, we were just talking outside, weren't we? Yeah. Going, you know, what would you put on a poster if you want to attract someone to the gym? Would you put someone with a big stocky base? And I'm like, well, I don't want to go there. Um, so it's a, it's attracting, let me say inclusive, it's everybody. It's absolutely everybody. Um, and since the Sports England, which again, has got us going, um, we're doing sessions during the day. Um, Burnley and a, a loads across Blackburn and numbers speak for himself. And when there's a session at 11 o'clock, people are coming at nine in the morning. It's about connecting. And again, um, making sure people have got everything. You know, some, some people panic when they get a letter. So he's able to make that phone call for them and sort out the, sort out the, the medication. You know, people have... Uh, the system had broke before the pandemic. And it's only getting worse. So if we can, we are mental health practices now through training and, you know, on top of that, our own experience, it's here instantly. So we've got so many different agencies involved. So on the sessions, you've got someone from NA, CA, and got a bad job. But if someone's struggling with that, they've got an instant... Uh, in. Sorry, just to add, I think the beauty is someone can ring us up <clears throat> nine o'clock in the morning and it's like, well, can you be, in it, be here within two hours? We've got a session on a Wednesday. Oh, I work in the day, right, well, we've got these at the evenings come to these. So like that way said it is it is literally instant where you know if, if you go to your GP and you're waiting for your minds matters, which are brilliant, it, at the minute they're just overworked, they're overrun. It's six month waiting list. Um it can be too minimum. late. Minimum it, it's it, it, I've been there myself, it can be too late. Unfortunately. Yeah, I just want to add, you know, during lockdown, um it was neglect. All services shut. And a phone call when somebody's all they haven't got anybody, it was enough. So we adapted, we put a face mask on, we went for walk with people, we we're all safe. Uh, and like Paul was saying earlier on, you know, other people want to do other stuff. So we've got some bikes donated. So there's bike rides, come on a bike ride. Come on. Most of it's just about talking to people or listening to people. Listening, yeah. Just listen. I think you're doing it now with your eyes, you're looking in their eyes. Uh, people know if you're listening, people know if you're interested in knowing that there's somebody there. And the great thing is we could say we've got 100 volunteers because people have come in a certain way, then they get it. And Paul said it's about educating, then it's the next person. It's a joy to see. Mm. It's a joy to see. Uh, the thing is we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> um, 
obviously with everything that's going on, but it's um, yeah, it's tiring. Yeah, it's most rewarding his job. Yeah, well, it, it sounds like the work you're doing um, is phenomenal and fantastic, and you know, a massive thank you for for everything that you're doing. And actually, what you're offering is is changing people's lives and turning them around and and engaging with some of the people in the greatest level of need um, across you know different areas. And as you said, I think, I can't remember the actual words you used, but the football, I think you described it as a carrot. Actually, the football is just a bit of a vehicle, but, but what you're really offering is that life-changing experience, connecting those communities yeah. and, and just helping people in a in an environment that isn't clinical, uh, you know, it's it's just connecting people who can relate with others of a similar situation um, yeah. and and move forwards. Yeah, well, paperwork scares people off as well. So keep that minimal, keep that minimal. If anybody wants to come sit, oh, I've got to give them a life story. We get to know people over time. We pair people up with, we know, we get to see maybe the best person to pair them up with. The best person, it's, it's all that thought that goes into all these you things. You could, um, honestly, we've said it, you, you could do this with any sport or any hobby, um, as long as it's got the right ethos and the right people. I'm not big enough, but the right people behind it. Um, but you could literally, we, we do football because it's our passion. Yeah. Um, and it does engage with a lot a lot more of a wider audience. And that's why we, we do it as football. But like yeah. I said, there is bike rides, there is walking. Um, just, just, there's, there's a kettle here, even if it's just an hour. Yeah. You want to come down and have a chat. Magazines that we've got. It's a hub. It's a hub. It's a, hub. It's a, community, it's a community hub. hub. And the thing is, as well, we have actually got people who come down not to play football, maybe to do the register, to feel part. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, again, it's, you know, it's, it's, again, it's a joy. And you're seeing, you know, what you see. I mean, it's heartbreaking. At the time, we have to take that, and we have to take that, and um, knowing where, because sometimes you're not boxers, it's about signposting and what works for ourselves, might not work for somebody else, so it's being aware of that, our own capabilities, and something we always try and get across is, please don't judge yourself on someone else's condition. So when someone goes, oh, pull yourself together, man, there's people loads worse off, no, your situation's your situation. Yeah. Or you saying to yourself, oh, there's people worse off than me, can actually make you feel even worse, even more of a failure. Your situation is your situation. And we all need people at times. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. And I, the, the passion, you mentioned passion there. The passion is absolutely evident. And I think that's really coming across very clearly. Um, you mentioned COVID and services being completely shut down. So, digitally and you know using sort of different marketing methods how did you continue to engage with your community um and and connect and potentially reach new people and engage them into the community during the lockdown periods what what worked for you i'll be honest it was it was, it was a slow burner because like i said we didn't we set up the accounts as we got the job in june last year and um, so during the pandemic um so what we did we started we had a, a core of people who used to come to the wednesday morning sessions didn't we um and we started doing one-to-ones um we started just getting some little snippets and videos and we put them together um and then we started putting them out there with some we like to use some clever hashtags don't we rather than yeah. rather than Stigmatize, I don't know if that's a word, stigmatizing things. We use things like, you know, don't be on your Todd, um, doing things different, keep the faith. Um, so yeah, it was a slow burner. Some of the videos weren't great at first, but um yeah, we were just we were just trying to capture um what's the word? Trying to trying to capture people scoring a goal and how they felt. Um Capturing different abilities as well to show that you don't have to be a superstar. And <laughs> um, so, you, yeah, yeah. And, and pictures, pictures as well. We, we did um, like player of the weeks, didn't we? Things like that. Yeah. So we've got like a board out here, which is, it's like um, when you get an interview at football, um, like the professionals. So we've got a board. So we put that in the background and got pictures of people and give little medals, a little sweets or, you know, little, just little things, you know. Yeah. I will say on the back, you're doing them, 
it built because then we had obviously people who had been furloughed that couldn't train with the football team. So again, it's about pairing them people because there's three of us, so we could do three to ones, three on three. Yeah. And you had a soccer AM, soccer soccer AM drills where he does um, Jimmy Bullard does it versus team. So we did fun ones like that. So people didn't realise how much exercise we was doing because yeah. it was in a fun way. And then we adapted that for the different clientele that we had down. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, we had a, a lass who played for Burnley, another lass that was at Man City, but she's now in university in America. Okay. So them to play good football standards. So their two drills were completely completely separate. <laughs> we're a bit more because they needed that because they needed to be fit for the football team when they started playing. And you've got somebody else who can't tie the shoelace. But what you're doing is putting them with two other guys. Yeah. Pretty much on the same wavelength. Who then the swapping numbers so yeah. then they can connect. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So and and I, I believe that attracted more people without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. As, as you, you learn more and more. I think initially at first as well, it was it was targeting in local services as well, just yeah. just to put our sort of get our name out there that you know we are a new sort of charity project in the community, um, and we got a lot of so because a lot of services are shut down or they were working from home, so they weren't seeing these people that maybe they support. So we we got a lot of people that way as well, yeah. didn't we? Um, well, I'll, do, I'll be honest. I do look back and I look back at these some of the videos that do 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 they are what they are now. Um, but then, yeah, as time's gone on, sort of self-taught and I've sort of realised what we need, what we need to capture. Um, maybe not doing the videos too big because you can lose people. Yeah. Um, I think when we started the, sorry to fast forward a bit, but when we started the Academy League, obviously we knew it was going to be more le for learning difficulties and disabilities. So we sort of changed the fonts, um, added a bit of colour. Um, just just made it a bit more approachable, maybe a bit more inviting. Um, just so yeah, just little things, but sort of self-taught yeah. in that in that. Then, then we then we jumped on for the night time and did quizzes. Yeah, quizzes and stuff. Yeah, sorry, yeah, for that. Um, did, yeah. did did the footy quizzes? So you know, up to God knows how many people. Then it then that evolved into bring your partner as well and have a, a partner quiz. and have a family quiz and. You know, because everyone at home and struggling so much, and it quite kind of works. We're all different personalities. Uh, where Paul, our, our, our gaffer, is not here today, he's a deep thinker and likes to do all that. He's Paul's weird. a bit of a whiz kid, computers and all that. We've all, we can all do each other things. Where I'd just be taking the mick out myself, you know, and trying to have a bit of smile and just stuff like that. And it's amazing, isn't it? a smile and we always say you know when you're walking past open the door for somebody you don't know if that's the only time someone's been having an interactive mm. during that day remembering something what someone's done last week the videos you was doing you were sending across to their family for them some of them yeah so so, so yeah, yeah some, some didn't want to be videoed and to give permission so because we, we had a bit more time then we was doing them um, i did a few personal sending ones which i'd send to um to them Obviously, the one one chap's got a high learning difficulty, so we're sending it to his mum. Um, so yeah, she shared it amongst the family and just things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So then we had to, to adapt the day to day ones in the end because we was killing ourselves because we were out on the football. <laughs> six, bit, hours right? day, yeah. six hours a day. Six hours a day. And he was Sam up doing soccer, rain, but you're collecting, you're putting balls in. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're encouraging. You're giving people your time, your energy. I don't think we felt our feet for four months, didn't right. we? Yeah. <laughs> We just just had a, um, uh, a comment in from Susie O'Shea, actually. She just said, loving this webinar. Thank you for being so honest and open. I shall definitely be recommending this to people to catch up on. Oh, um, really? So uh, we're getting some, some love from the people tuning in. And, and one thing I just wanted to pick up on that you spoke about there was self-taught video. I wonder if you could just perhaps talk about that, because to a lot of people, actually using video and being on camera if you've not done it before is quite daunting so can you just perhaps share a little bit more on you know what did you use professional cameras did you have people <laughs> coming in to do pro with proper rigs and setups or actually are we talking iphone or, or android and we're just using the kit that we've got and doing the best with it we can so i i, I did a basic video editing course through um, 
it, it was tough to get in at the future. So that was just maybe how to edit. So it was a basic couple of hours um, session uh, that was on Zoom. Um, so no, yeah, the answer to your question is I use a phone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, our work phone was that bad. That's what the original videos were off. So um, are, we, are we talking Nokia 3210 or...? Yeah, pretty much. The snakes is the best feature on it, if I'm honest. Um, great, yeah. But um, so my um, phone con, my personal phone contract was actually due in October. So I personally, uh, I purposely picked uh, Hawaii just just for the the, the phone. Um, I don't know, is it megapixels and stuff like that? You can get better shots. Um, so yeah, we're just we're still just using this. I have a tripod. We are looking at a bit of funding for like getting mics because I, I have I've watched videos and I've seen things and the, the lightings and um, lightings and obviously mics make a you know massive difference. Um, so yeah, just sort of as I'm going, I'll be honest with you, I watch a bit of TikTok as well and some of the stuff to do on there with video trickery and stuff like that. And it's really clever. So it's just. Um, yeah, just just watching and sort of taking a bit of bit of tips off everything I see and what what's realistically possible to do, I suppose. Yeah, uh, and I think one of the things... I've always been able to use a phone, obviously. Uh, I think he's undercutting himself there because some of the videos he's done are absolutely superb. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, I think yeah, I think it's just imagination. I think we did. I think my favourite one was the Burnley one where we we put in you know Sky Sports breaking news and we did a C fax and create footballs coming. To, just it's just using a bit of imagination, I, I suppose. Um, I don't know where it comes from. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think one of the brilliant things there is um, you know for for yourselves perhaps. You, you started out and you're saying now you look back at some of the earlier videos and not cringeworthy, but but you recognise that there's been a journey. Oh, you've, yeah. you've improved and you've learned. And, and what you've not done is allowed fear to just stop you from doing it. You've actually, you've been fearless in just trying it and yeah. putting it out there, you know, getting a response from that video and then as time's gone on, you're, you're learning and you're developing and you're figuring out what works and what doesn't. Yeah. I, with that, have you had any particular, and, and a lot of what you've been talking about really relates with um, a webinar that we had earlier this week. So we had a, a video content expert on Tuesday, a chap called Luke Sharon from Falcon Digital. And and he spoke about a lot of the things that you've mentioned, you know, the difference that lighting can have, the difference that good sound quality and even like a basic mic um, can make on how how well the videos are landing yeah. um, and sort of the shots and everything. I wonder if you could perhaps share experience of a particular video that's gone well. Um, you know, what's what's been your most successful video? If you want them, uh, oh, yeah, would that be including that selection that, of what, what you did the Christmas? Yeah, so I, I don't know if you see, yeah. Um, I thought it was amazing. I think, I think I did an advent calendar last December, um, which was interesting. So it was sort of done on, um, oh, what's the slide thing called? That's it, I'm terrible on Word. Is it publisher? PowerPoint. PowerPoint, that's the one, yeah, yeah. So we got all creative, and I think I think they was so yeah. We put a book, we put a reel in, and it, a window opened, and and then there was a message from um, either a participant or someone that sort of helped us on our journey, so like a company or a sponsor, and it was just a cheery, um, you know, well, wish still, people. Yeah, it was a build up to we was dropping Christmas parcels off on Christmas Eve. Yeah. And people have donated. So these, these, because um, you know, so many people that obviously are going to be in their home for Christmas. So the idea with these, these, these parcels was right, everything's got to be in there. Nice breakfast, a dinner. We've got to think about if people haven't got an oven. You know what I mean? So, so they've got a Christmas dinner, maybe microwavable treats, a present, um, crisp, you know, all the stuff what people at home have been gorging out on, on that day and just trying to make it as special as, as possible. So different people who yeah. donated to this 
attend the messes, different organisations been working with that help get us the bike. We even got one off Santa, didn't we, for Christmas Day? Yeah, even got one off well, Santa. Yeah, no, yeah. So we did 25 of them, which was, yeah, it was painful and hard work at times, I'm honest. But, Masterpiece, mate. Masterpiece. Yeah, no, it, I'll be honest, that, that was probably my pr- proudest videos. Um, a lot then, of detail. Yeah, going back to other videos, I've done a few interviews now, so I've, I've learned that, you know, putting um, little breakaways in them when people are talking seem to be a bit more effective because it can be a bit boring if someone's just talking and you're just viewing them. So we started adding a few breakaways now to maybe if, if a certain participant's interviewing, we'll then break away to an action shot, scoring a goal. Um, so, yeah, just adding little things like that, I found. And then, obviously, just making clips a lot smaller, but then I'll put the bigger clip with a link to, on YouTube for people. So then, yeah, just trying to catch people and then not lose them. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think absolutely. That seems yeah. to be the, the the best way. Yeah. Yeah. So what again? What you're talking about there is um, is kind of having long form video living on YouTube, and then short form video that kind of draws people to that. So that if you are creating content, it's not just necessarily about a single piece of content. It's about um, building components to that content. So like. Yeah. The short form acts as the magnet and that yeah. pulls people to the long yeah. form where they can find out more. Well, that's where we found with the, the the views or maybe putting a link on to say the website and people we got more hits because we I mean we know it's so what I do obviously is do the big video and then I just go in and I just edit it down and then we we that's where we send more views on YouTube because people sort of well, if you like, they, they click the link and go on a bit more of this. Um, and then also the good thing about having the full video of a highlight, say, of a game or whatever, and in interviews is that it's always there for participants to then go back and watch. Um, and the, the, I think the, the the comments we get back off people is, yeah, gen- generally very positive. They quite enjoy seeing them, I think. And have, have you ever sort of, again, looking back at some of the earlier videos um, that perhaps haven't landed quite so well, um, have there been either any, not necessarily mistakes that you've made, but things that you've done that you've just quite, you've um, quite clearly learned that doing this just doesn't seem yeah. to work? Um, think, yeah, sorry, the, the first one was just the camera quality straight away. Um, and then the portrait landscape mixing is never a good idea. Um, I tend to always go landscape, um, especially we're using YouTube. Because um, when you're editing, you'll get it that thin if it's portrait and then you get it perfect. So yeah, I always keep them the same way. If it's maybe just for Facebook and interview, I'll always maybe do it that way. It just, it just depends on what we are doing, but I'll never mix and match. Um, and then... Um, yeah, and then just just probably positioning, especially with the soccer AM drills, that's what it was at the beginning. So we, we learned a lot from positioning. So we started doing ones um, from the floor with a bit of grass in and stuff like that, and just a bit yeah. of a different effect. Because you can get boring the same angle all the time. Then we go behind the goal, maybe. Um, so, yeah, just little things like that. We just, I just changed or put together. Yeah, and then I think I mean, the important one is well, sometimes, depending on what music we use, um, if a beat drops, I, I always seem to try and do it when a goal's at the back of the net. So, you know what I mean? Just little things like that. Just, and I, I think as well as kind of the technical side of, of the quality of the video and the ways in which you've tried to vary it so it doesn't remain always the same, you know, always at the same height from the same yeah. distance, capturing the same thing, you've considered different perspectives yeah. which i think is brilliant but actually one of the things that's clearly coming across is what you're trying to capture are the stories that you want to share what what it, it's never struck me through this session and discussion that you've tried to just directly promote your services oh, um, no. actually what you're talking about is just sharing stories um, yeah. and just opening those stories up to other people who can perhaps come into that. Yeah, it, 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 that's what they are for. I, I mean, we've done two or three promos when we've started the new area, like for Langor, um, they've just been short 30-second videos of maybe just pictures of the venue and stuff like that. 
But yeah, ninety five percent of the videos is I started them for for the participants to have to look back on and to show the community that the summit right here, right in the centre, that you know, come and access us if you need us, if you're struggling, or you just want an hour away from the kids and misses, because we all need that at times, you know what I mean? But yeah, that's that's what the videos are for, were not it? Yeah. Never, never really for promotion. I think, I think again, both of you just said it. it's about the videos there going, all right, choose him, and everybody can do it. But it's just showing that when we say inclusive, it's like, oh, he can do it, yeah. or she can do it, I can do it. And look, they're laughing and joking, they're not getting shot down, they're not, we're not a football we're team, we're not a football club. This is yours, this is ours, this is yours, it's a community. We've put together um, like spoofs of ourselves, oh. you know, you know, just like. We did one for it. We went to do a Christmas message and it ended up being yeah, out, outtakes. It, it was just outtakes. So what Beautiful. we do, we was free, especially with the football as well. You know, we, we did a football thing, didn't we, where we were awful. <laughs> so yeah. we just put it together, just show that we're not that serious. And, that, do you know what I mean? We we all make we're mistakes. Approachable, we're approachable, yeah. you know, just, just come down and have a laugh. And, yeah. Just take a mic out of ourselves as well. So I'm going to ask a question of um, the the audience, the people who are tuning in and watching this live session. I'm just I'm just curious to find out sort of in the, in the world of video content and putting video out there, um, how have you used it so far? Um, and are there any sort of fears that you've got with actually doing video that perhaps you've never done before? Just a question for people. Feel free to just post your thoughts in the in the chat, um, or again ask any questions in the Q and A. Um, so coming back to yourself, um, Paul and Wayne, yeah. you, you mentioned sort of a lot of the different types of video, and we've spoken yeah. about some of the recorded video that you've captured, sharing those stories. Um, have you also you? And I think you also mentioned the the quiz. Um, was that done via a live stream video? Yeah, Zoom. Well? Yeah, yeah, we did Zoom quizzes. Um, so we just so we did some we compiled some videos, didn't we? So, so, so how many times could we hit the crossbar? Um, yeah. People had to guess. Do you know what I mean? Like tiebreakers. Um, how many kickups we could do between us while keeping the ball low? Which is quite funny because they all aim low. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be fair, they said it was us three, and I think yeah. the highest was like six. So that was a bit, yeah. All, but, all a bit of fun in it and stuff, you know. So, so yeah, it was all all through Zoom. Um, so we connected like with um, recovery at homes and stuff, and um, different organisations, and we just put these Zooms on. Um, and yeah, we got like. Donated a few little prizes, didn't we? Like yeah, yeah. Kit Fitbit watches. One, and one of our friends we play football with, he yeah. was a guest. One, well, a couple of football guest players. Guest speakers, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, we had. Um, right on, what? What's his name? The Conor Mahoney. Oh, um, Emery did question the sport. Matt Dawson, rugby. Matt, Matt Dawson, oh, wow. he on it as well. So, yeah. He was brilliant, yeah. Uh, yeah, someone yeah. who uses our service, and, and it's, it's, again, one of them that's uh, don't play football, but just comes to chat to people. Really, yeah. really been great help, and he 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 sent found an email and sent it across to him. So I think at the brilliant. time he was going doing the few, weren't he? Because he says he was on for an hour. And went, oh, I'm gonna have to shoot for another one. So he was just a feel good fact they were going on him to maybe put. He was just, yeah, it was brilliant. Just this free time, obviously at home and jumping on these random quizzes around the country, just fantastic. People said them quizzes. It was the highlight of the week when everyone's on lockdown. The highlight a week, connecting, seeing faces, and it got can get can get messy. But you know, when we're getting the answers, then it's it's a bit open for a bit more fun and but yeah. It, like you say, it was just it kept the people connected from certain sessions together. But then it also said it also put you had lads from the Blackburn session on with the Chorley session and lads that maybe never met as well. And then obviously we started a Friday one where it was partners. So then it was like. Which partners never get involved, they don't come to the session, so it was, it was really good. It was, yeah, collect and, and then the ball come up, didn't it? People wanted to do the quiz themselves, so then the partners would do the quiz for the following, so yeah, yeah it's it great, brilliant. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, it so, certainly yeah. sounds like your, your approach and your energy and your passion has just created this really almost self perpetuating community where the word is just spreading um, and engaging in more people. Um, 
Have you, with the live streaming, have you, as well as using Zoom and, and doing the quizzes through that type of platform, have you done any live streaming via social, whether it's through Facebook or other? Yeah, yeah, I do, do, we, do we do quite a lot. Well, we did do quite a lot, sorry. Um, the minute we just don't we're sort of that involved in the sessions, but um, especially the evening one, I sort of sit back on that because I have two sessions in there on a Monday. Um, yeah, and I found the last one I did was brilliant um, because I was just chatting rubbish, probably, you know, like commentating on players, <laughs> um, asking people questions that were watching and, yeah, just, just having a laugh. But the lads who couldn't make it was all commenting, on, but they were back the week after or two weeks later, do you know what I mean? Because obviously with, with um, shift work or childcare, so it was good because pe people were at work watching it. Um, yeah, the, 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 I think the lives, um, they're fantastic, um, just to keep people... You get a real visual and feeling of, oh, yeah, I could do that, actually. Do you know what I mean? Um, or I fancy a bit of that. So, yeah. Was it, how, how did you find it, sort of doing it for the first time, the, the live streaming through social? Um, was that quite daunting? Um, it, was, has there been anything that you've learned that's helped you perhaps improve your approach to to doing the lives and actually, you know, that working and having the success. Um, probably warning a couple of lads at evening session that were going live, don't swear because <laughs> it happened. Not they don't swear in a nasty way, but it just happens. <laughs> um, Hold your breath. Yeah, probably. The, yeah, don't breathe in too much. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's it sounds. You know, you're doing one. Like your breath really overtakes it, you know. Yeah. Obviously, you're taking part. <laughs> <laughs> you're going good. Is that the guy helping to facilitate? He sounds like he's going to ask for a time. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think a few of the first ones were quite silent on them, if I'm honest, and didn't really talk, just trying to capture it. And then as it's gone on, I've sort of maybe said, you know, this is on every week. We've got so many lads down or women down. Um, the next one is so using it then as an advertisement as well. Um, you know. Um, yeah, so, you know, basically giving that information when the sessions are on and where we are. One, one of the big questions that uh, I want to ask in, in just a moment, I don't want to know the answer just yet, but when you first started speaking, you said you met as opponents. So I'm really curious to find out who won. Don't tell me just yet. Um, which, whether it was your team, Paul, or whether it was your team, when I'm, I'm curious to know the answer to that. But I just do it on a personal level. <laughs> <laughs> was there a winner? Was it was it a draw? I can't remember the first actual game. It's quite funny because I'm sort of attacker and wins. I'm, I'm wins, a and wins are really good defender. So, so I remember oh, okay. him because he's got a sweet left foot. <laughs> and then if if he scored one, which he probably did, I would then quickly realised, don't let him get the ball on his left foot. <laughs> uh, but I was in a hospital at the time, and at the time uh, it was all run properly, wrongly. The hospital we was in, we had to stay together, we weren't allowed to mix, and do you know what I mean? And all this, and all stay here, so he was in it, but he wasn't here. But that's evolved over time, because we actually were at that hospital now where I was in. We're really, really closely with them and changing wow. how it works. So you let people mix because they'll be the mates when they get out. Uh, but yeah, probably can't remember. Probably had a bit of each other, really, to be fair. And um, same with Liverpool, who was on their same side. But uh, we managed to travel all around playing together. Um, Northampton, uh, Man yeah. City's ground, um, you know, uh, Northampton, um, Derby County, you know. Of days away and take people for them trips as well, which is great as we're holding our own tournaments. Um, but I'd much rather have them on my side than against me, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And what, so, what about the the future of um, of creative football? Then, what's the what's the sort of the dream, the vision? You've got this community, you've engaged with so many people and have massive impact on their lives positively. What's What's the, the the ambition moving forward? Well, it's changing, isn't it, all the time. Everything, we, we, had, we had a set thing. So we've got the seven boroughs of East Lancashire, which we have to set a session up in each one. So we're in four of them already. But other things have evolved, like we've started at the college now for the, the students that will be struggling more. NCS. 
Is it what they're called? Is it NCS students and stuff, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's like um, a lot of people will go to college, and we've seen this at our sessions. People ten years later, they're still in a very small clip, but they've got nothing. Do you know what I mean? It's quite challenging. Challenging. So we're going there and delivering a session now. So that that's a new thing that we've started. Um, so basically, it's going to like be a pilot. Yeah. If it works here, you know, so engage with them and then offer them different supports and get them involved in our session. We yeah. Obviously, because limited with funding and stuff, we 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 know we've got till twenty twenty three, and then maybe a accelerator fund. Um, so it, I think because we're limited, and the I think they're realizing this free of use, and we can't do all these seven boroughs as well as what we've got on in Blackburn, Darwin, sure, everywhere. So I think as well now what we're doing, what we're willing to do is obviously share good practice. So um, if people want to come to us or things that we're trialing and doing works and don't work, then maybe. You know, they can go and then set that up in their borough or their, you know, spread it. I think the dream is, is we'd love all our sessions to be free, it'd be funded, and we'd yeah. be all, you know, around the country, really, because this should be, this needs to be in every, well, every town for me. Yeah, um, it's working. It's it, working. So. It, it, I think the the like the league's been going for 10 years, and Bucks United's four, we've come up to four years, and it's, it, the, 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 the time is showing that, it had collapsed years ago if it didn't weren't needed. Let's be honest, it wouldn't be here. Um, so it's proven, it's proven. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, it's it's growing and growing all the time, and obviously, yeah, that's a bit of strain and pressure. But yeah, to see these services open, which it wasn't for us when we were younger, uh, if I say younger, maybe not even a few <laughs> years ago, to be able to get that access, that support straight away in a non-judgmental setting. Um, safe. safe, secure, with backing, and like I say, no one judging you massively, no matter what you look like, where you're from. You know, like I say, we just had a massive influx of 15 refugees mm -hmm. come two weeks ago because of what's going on, and they come down. 15 have been referred here, and social prescribing yes, now as well. Social we? prescribing. It should, this should be funded by your NHS, your lo local authorities, because the money you're saving long term. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's saving short term as well. Do you know what I mean? But again, it's it's a difficult one, it because the country's on its knees. So again, we've also been going to businesses and doing well-being talks. You know, we, we all go into most people going to work on a Monday, right? What are you doing this week? Are you going to get this done? Are you getting that done? When there's another thing going the other way around, going, how was your weekend? You know, that personal approach. As with a massive percentage, we've been doing something with a company called Meritech. And doing online, very subtle mental health awareness, um, just about well-being. You know, having just that look, them, yeah, taste it? it, having a look around in your office, people who work with going, a bit angry today. His hair's a bit shiver. What's going on? And I think there's the numbers of people that are off work on Mondays. So obviously, you know, it's these signs and things to be able to look out for. The mental health first, I believe everybody. You know, in every company, there should be some more of that because you can be a first aid trainer and probably put a plaster on in three years. Just giving someone five minutes time, so that's your lifesaver. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Before it's too late, because we as men will hold it in and hold it in, and everyone will go, but we didn't know I see him last Wednesday. How would you know? We carry this round with us, don't we? When, you know, my biggest thing for me was, why do people know I'm dying on the inside? Yeah, I'm really unwell. Why do people know? Because I didn't want them to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. you know the strongest person. It's not the weakest person. The strongest person goes. I'm struggling here. Yeah, yeah it's a re really powerful message. Um, and just to bring it back to sort of the digital marketing, you talk yeah. about yeah. the ambition and having something that either you deliver or you support in every town, because actually there's people across the UK who need this kind of service. Um, how do you see yourself using digital marketing to to help with that journey um moving forwards um I, well I, I think it's it's stories. yeah it's, it's it's going to be important um i think eventually as well we are going to maybe add some testimonies so maybe um it's not stuff we put on people but there is when people are ready um so we'll start compiling a couple of them just 
Because it, it's, it's horrible because we're not under KPIs or any or numbers or anything, but at the same time we've got to collect that it's working and that you know and it's it, for people maybe to want to sponsor or invest or you know if like you say um, use the service use the service yeah so um, I think going forward I'm also in contact with um, she's called Alison she does all the comms and media doesn't she for okay. together so she's brilliant she really digs my videos up to be honest um, she's fantastic so and there's a lot lot I can learn that way um, with advice with Alison but I think going forward I think um, yeah I think I think I'll be honest with you I think if the videos did stop we don't do them as regular now but if the videos did stop or even just the pictures we put on the constant every week if that stopped I do think we'd see a, a big a big decline Mm-hmm. Um, because we do get a lot, you know, some weeks it can be, like I said, repetitive and we might only get one or two likes even there, and then another week we can get 20, you know what I mean? It can just be a big influx. Yeah. Um, so, but it's nice because we know, and then there's people that just comment, oh, I've seen that picture, well, you didn't like it, but that's why that's what we're saying about lurkers in the background, that, you know, they are seeing it, um, and a lot of people that come down will, will maybe say, oh, what services brought you down and some people just go oh I seen it on Facebook or you know yeah. and we get that's why we get constant inboxes all the time a lot of people that, not a lot of people but I'd say 40-45% of the people before they come down do inboxes and ask for information and ask if they can come down and, yeah they put a photo on last week Paul put a photo on last week or the week before from the Darwin nighttime session so the two biggest rivals in the UK Celtic and Rangers yeah yeah. and it's just a photo of a, a mugging just yeah just one be- in a Celtic top Celtic strip and the one in his Rangers so in these sessions no matter who we support that was a message that was the message yeah. I just felt yeah, yeah it was quite, quite fitting because so these, these these two were uh, weren't at each other is in a nasty way but the banter were brilliant um you know, both from top lads, they can both take it, both give it, and um, shaking hands, hugging at the end, and I just went, go, we need to get a pitch, we need to snap this. this, this, that, this. That's a message, isn't it? That's a message in itself. It's like when the refugees come down, 15 come down, they're all there, they're all quiet, split them all up into different teams, they go get to know them, and universal language, and all of a sudden, at the end, everyone was hugging, but some of the lads, you know, I don't, don't I believe they don't know what to say, uneducated, and all of a sudden, I kept hearing the word blow, blow, where they from Jamaica, do you know what I mean? But it's like, try and say, do you know what I mean? I didn't, didn't know what to say, or, or if they didn't understand, or something like that, and it sounds silly, and it's like, educating and stuff like that, but they're loving it, coming it back, and again, that's togetherness, unity, and that's what we always say, it's unity, in it? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, as you say there, Paul, um, the the engagement that the social content and putting the videos out there offers, you know, if you weren't doing it, you feel like you would actually see that drop off. It's just, it's that connection and it's that ability to, to engage, feel like they're part of it and that touch point. Because for, for the one or two hours in the week where perhaps people are coming and taking part in the sessions, there's a lot more hours in the week where people aren't down. And actually that content is just that lifeline. It's that touch point and that reminder and yeah. it keeps people feeling like they're connected, which is absolutely yeah. vital. Let it not, not just go off subject, but um, we, we decided, someone come to us and his um, nephew's got terminal cancer, he's only seven, and someone said, you know, come, we, well, I want to do a charity game. Da, 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 come on. Um, John Old Project printing is a thing. We put it out there on our social media. The community, it, 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 we are absolutely overwhelmed with prizes that are donated to raffles. Um, someone's coming and giving us two pounds. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's that's just through our social media, just by putting it on. We weren't expecting a lot, if I'm honest, because mm. we don't expect anything back. But the, the support from the people that are using the sessions or know of people, you know, that have shared it, it's it's been, it's it, yeah. It's been quite. Going to be giving thousands. Quite, of stu- quite, quite, quite. It's quite stunning, and and it's not just us. It's it is the community. Participants are coming down. We've got the family have all chipped in together. So it's a community supporting the community. Yeah, you know what I mean, and this yeah. is just built on a lot from well, a majority of it from social media in it or like getting it out there because people weren't seen. We're a bit busy now, or man, got some mainstream football, and that's the power of social media using it right. 
And I believe you've, you've, you've nailed it with a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Um, to, with that, this hour is an absolute, uh -huh. um, and I'm very conscious that, uh, you know, we're, we're coming to a close now. Um, just want to say a huge thank you uh, to everyone who's tuned in live and joined us and the comments. Um, and a big thank you to you two, Paul and Wayne. You know, really enjoyed this. Um, yeah, thank you. you. You mentioned, we mentioned just before coming on, obviously, to, to keep your services going. Um, you, you're funded, but you also rely on sponsorship. Um, and there are sort of sponsorship opportunities available. Um, what's the, the website for Creative Football where perhaps people can find out more, check out some of you, your video content? Yeah, and, and yeah so it's... It's, um, you know, there's opportunities if people want to sponsor the, um, you know, like the sessions or, you know, or league. But it's www.creativefootball.co.uk. That's our website. Uh, obviously, we're on... Um, Let's see that. I've, I've just put that link. Um, I've just put it into the chat. So everyone should be able to access that. Um, and they can check some of your video out. And I think... Have, have I tapped it right? Cool. Yeah, no, There's no. a typo. It will so be. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it will be. Too. Ignore that. I will post the correct one right now. Um, yeah. Apologies. I've got a slightly over-enthusiastic keyboard. Um, yeah, uh, so I think the YouTube as well, and I think you visually see the difference of the videos. Um, so, yeah, that, that's creative football on our own channel. And there's a there's a video on there that Alison uh, Big Tank come down and ran a story uh, of two participants, totally different age group from different backgrounds, and it was their journeys coming down to the sessions. One not, not a non football player um, during lockdown, we, we was doing walk and talks with, and the other guy, young kid, uh, had a few tough breaks, and about their journey through into back into work. So there's a great video there about if people want to see it. And that was done by some, uh, yeah, Big Tank, was it? Big yeah, Big Tank. Tank. Yeah. Right. Fantastic. Uh, it sounds absolutely brilliant. And I've, I've posted the correct link um, and I've curbed my over-enthusiastic keyboard. No, so that should work now and take people to the website where they can find out more. Please do check it out and you'll get some great ideas um, for for any video content that you're looking to do and how they've approached it and how they've had that success. Um, so, yeah, once again, a, a massive shout out and thank you, Paul. Thank you, Wayne. Thank um, you, Wayne. One final um, sort of reminder is just for a big, a, a bit of a plug for our next webinar. So next Tuesday, the 19th of October at 11 o'clock, we've got our third Google webinar. Um, and this one's around finding customers with Google Maps. Um, so you can register to that via the hub. So just log into the digital marketing hub and register your place on that session. Um, and thanks again today. Um, I see one final comment from Susie. She said, it would be great to have a short clip of this to promote the full webinar to others. Um, that is something that we're actually doing. So uh, this is being recorded and we've got someone who's going to um, try and edit and crop and just pull some key bits from this recording itself, which is obviously something you can do with video content, but we'll be doing it as well. So we're very much practicing what we're talking about here, hopefully. Um, thanks again, guys. Um, enjoy the rest of your Thursday and uh, and. Uh, yeah, I, I wish you all the very best with creative football and the incredible work that you're doing because it just sounds brilliant. So no, uh, thank you. Well, you've edited edit, edit, edit that. I suppose you could send it across to Paul, could you? So we so, will yeah. do. Yeah, we will make that happen. No problem at all. Yeah, and then we'll get it on our website, the, the interview and that as well, mate, if that's okay. Absolutely. That would be brilliant. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day, everybody. Thank Take you. Care. Take uh, care, guys. Bye-bye.